Hey guys, so for this video, I'm gonna look at a bunch of things I learned from BL Anas. If you don't know who that is, Anas is a pro player from Denmark that's consistently placed at the top of numerous solo cash cups. More specifically, he won the week 9 contender cup, placed 3rd in the next one a week later, and then placed 26th on the NAE servers. The most impressive thing to me though is that Anas is not the most mechanically skilled. What he relies on is his game sense, aim, and 200 IQ strategies I'm gonna showcase in a minute. So without further ado, let's get right on into it. The first and probably the smartest thing I picked up from Anas was this specific trick he constantly uses in the mid game. What I'm talking about is how instead of building a 1x1, he actually built a 2x1. Whether he's in the middle of a box fight or just basing up in zone, Anas almost always uses this technique to turtle. Why? Mainly because of how much more space it gives you to make plays. Let's say you did what most pros and other players would do while getting pushed, which is just just sit in a 1x1. One one. This may seem like the right play since everyone else does it, but you're really just making it easier for your opponent to kill you. All they gotta do is yoink one wall and you're instantly put into an awkward position. With the 2x1 strat on the other hand, you don't have to worry about that anymore. You can stand at the center of each wall that connects each box and move over to the one that's not being pressured if you need to. This gives you more space to move around, more builds to edit, and less of a chance to get cornered in one box. Take for example this fight and gets into. We see him engage his opponent from a distance, then immediately build a 2 by one once he realizes the guy is going to push him. From there, Anas makes sure all of his builds are secure and put down, at which point the box fight begins. Initially, Anas goes for a trap play, but his opponent avoids it after escaping out the side. Anas follows that up with yet another trap play and finally secures the kill after breaking his opponent's ramp. Now, if you look a little closer into that play, we can truly see the beauty of the 2 by one trick. Notice how after the first trap misses, he resets his wall and holds it because he knows the other guy is going to try to take it. Well, the other guy actually does take it and goes for an edit play by placing a cone. Had Anas been in a normal 1x1, one one, that cone would have been in his box and prevented him from building his own cone or ramp and he'd be dead. However, solely because of the 2x1 he already built, he was able to move to the right, away from the box his opponent controlled, and completely change the tide of the fight. None of that would be possible in a normal box. The other clip I wanted to show was a clip I saw from Speedy Gonzalez where he originally highlighted this strategy. Anas, as per usual, gets into an engagement and builds a defensive 2 by one The difference here though is that Anas is forced to build another 2 by one behind him after his opponent yoinks his wall. This is important because as his opponent continues to push forward and pressure him, Anas goes up and out of the box he's in and edits back through his own builds for the kill. So even if you're not using your 2 by one to make smart peaks from unexpected angles, Angles, you can use it in many other ways like the clip we just witnessed from Anas. All in all, the 2x1 strat is genius. Yes, it does take an extra 60 total builds, which isn't something you should ignore. Still, I personally think it's more than worth it during the mid game. Not only will you get your mats replenished if you get a kill, but you also won't die as easily. So anytime you find yourself on the defensive and getting pushed in the mid game, build a 2x1 to win the fight. Next thing I picked up from Anas is a ridiculously overpowered late game strategy that that he always utilizes. This trick is not specific to him and was not made by him, but he's easily one of the best at making it work. The strat I'm referring to is purposely staying in zone with floppers. You've probably noticed this if you've ever watched his highlight videos as he always seems to be in the storm during late game moving zones. The reasoning behind it is pretty straightforward. First off, sitting in the storm gives you the opportunity to clean up a ton of kills you otherwise could not. Whether it's someone trying to escape out of the storm, or someone in zone that simply cannot see you, sitting in the storm yourself gives you an amazing angle on your opponents. Second, floppers will actually help you rotate in the late game for free. Not only are you able to rotate without getting focused, but you'll also be able to rotate without using much mats. Speedy proved this himself using a rotate Anas did in the NAE solo cash cup. As per usual, we see Anas just chilling behind everyone on the mid ground, which is much safer for these flopper plays since the low ground is always is a mess. Back to the rotate and he's looking for shots on his opponents using his absurd amount of floppers and protecting himself because the guy on high ground did see him. In all honesty, he probably could have used less materials if he just used old builds like he's doing now. None of the builds he placed really served much purpose until the end when he builds up for high ground. Still, my point stands that floppers are OP and when used correctly will give you a free rotation. The last thing you can use floppers for, which we saw at the end there, is to 
take high ground. The same general concept applies again. The person currently on high ground will be focused on people below them and not on some madman who's 20 feet behind him in storm. In this clip, we see a Nas slowly moving towards high ground as he uses floppers to stay alive. Then he sees his opportunity to go up after the guy on height drops down and RPGs the one platform his opponent is on out. Then without missing a beat, he ramps up and takes high ground, which as you'll see in a second, ends up giving him the win. Alright, evidently floppers are busted and are the meta. The thing most people overlook though is that you cannot rely on finding them in the mid and late game. Like a Nas, you need to find them in the early game and incorporate them into your loot route. The usual place a Nas lands is Misty Meadows in low point cup games. This is where he'll find a harpoon and get floppers in the river. On the other hand, when Misty Meadows is a hot drop and he wants to stay alive, he'll instead land at the cabin behind it and use a fishing rod to collect his floppers. Finally, if he wants to play it insanely safe, he'll land at the hydropower factory and get stacked on slurpfish and floppers near Slurpee. It doesn't matter where the zone is or which way the bus route went, Anas always makes sure he has floppers in the early game in order to use them in the late. So if you're struggling to consistently win endgames, stop trying to go against the flopper meta and join it. The next thing Anas always uses and uses well is the RPG. This is something I've talked about a lot in the past. I think the first time I brought it up was when turbo building first got changed and then I recently highlighted it in my video on why you suck at box fighting. The player we analyzed in that was Wavy Jacob who was always able to land a fat pump after shooting his RPG. So after watching Anas put it to use as well, I wanted to bring it up again to tell you how busted it truly is. All you need to do is time your pump shot right after you rocket their base and you can easily pick up a free elimination or get off damage before the fight even starts. For Anas, that would then put his opponent in a bad position, leaving him to pressure them with a health and shield advantage. The thing is, unlike Wavy Jacob, Anas uses the RPG in much more ways than just that one. Sometimes he'll go below his opponent, trap the wall or floor, and RPG them down onto it, eventually securing the kill. Other times when he's above his opponent, he would RPG their base and break their builds with a harpoon to make the rocket go through. This creativeness and his ability to think on the fly is a huge reason for his success and why he's able to win so many fights without having the best mechanics. That actually brings up the last important thing I learned from Anas, which was how crucial your aim is in these high tier lobbies. Nowadays, you have to realize everyone is a decent builder or editor. I honestly bet a ton of you guys could outbuild Anas and edit faster than he could. What separates you from him though is his aim. This man's aim is absolutely disgusting. He honestly reminded me of a controller player because of how hard his pumps hit and how many times he would laser people with an AR. For controller players, that's a joke by the way, please don't hurt me. Seriously though, the reason I bring that up is that it's similar to the RPG pump combo where his aim alone wins him fights and games. There were so many times where he'd be caught in a sticky situation and only got out of it because he hit his shots. I know for a fact that if I was in those situations, I would have either died or drawn the fight out longer because my aim is not as good. Therefore, for all you grinders looking to place higher and start making a name for yourself, start focusing more on your aim. Trust me, I know it's way more fun to free build in creative than it is to sit there mindlessly doing aim trainers, but if you're serious about improving and winning in the battle royale game mode, your aim is the most important mechanic you have. I recommend in-game aim trainers like the one Mongrel uses called Scavix, or third-party aim trainers like Kovacs and Aimtastic. For those of you wondering how Anas's aim is so good, I asked him himself and he said he doesn't know. I originally thought he played on a low sense, which he does not. He actually plays on about 72 EDPI, which is more of a mid sense. And on top of that, he said he's never used an aim trainer in his life. All he says he does is grind the game every single day and his aim has improved to that point. So I know this is kind of a weird and confusing way to end off the video, but the takeaway is to understand how important your aim is in competitive and that you should do whatever it takes to improve it. Overall guys, that's everything I learned from the beast BL Anas. As a quick recap, remember to build 2x1s instead of 1x1s when you're getting pushed, get floppers early in the game so you can use them in the late game to get kills, rotate and take height, always utilize your RPG to get free shots off and make plays, and finally, prioritize your aim if you're looking to take your gameplay to the next level. So if you guys learned something new or found the video useful, then do be sure to drop a like, subscribe to the channel, and to turn on my post notifications. Shout out to everyone using code Jerry.
Marion. Your support has been insane recently, and I really cannot thank you guys enough. Otherwise, that's it from me, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Later.